Dan Exer. It's just because I don't want to be called anything else or coined a name that might be undesirable or lead my reputation into a direction that could mislead others. Look at me, speaking like I have followers. Well, doing this does break the current monotony of my schedule, so I think I'll just go on ahead. I will paint a picture of myself as I go along, with every video, because a life with God is a personal experience, and I want you to hear and feel like you are interacting with a human, just as yourself. Next up, two dreams that I loosely hold on to and treat with a modicum of speculation and wonder. The first dream I want to share with you is a continuation of the tsunami dreams. Much later, after some have survived the cataclysm at the coast, we all lived there for a while. Later, some chose to stay and some went to the upcountry refugee camps, white tents on a dryish stretch of land just outside a major city. Just bear with my that will happen and this will happen manner of speaking. There will come a time as I saw, not as I say, that a political upheaval will take place. The reason? No idea, but I can speculate. White people were transported in vehicles with large capacities to semi-large, odd-looking compounds. Now, I saw my family transported just across or on the border of one of the neighboring countries to South Africa, in an arid or dry environment, and into one of these compounds. Black, African, military security personnel were everywhere and they were very stern, strict and not afraid to shoot you on the spot if you deviated. I saw a border station with more than usual personnel and then a few also guarding the outside of the compound, making sure no one gets out. I felt that this was just one of many compounds in the country. The best description for this compound I can give you is that it's about just three to five stories or layers. Picture a bulky, plain, mass storage or high school looking compound building thing. I believe you are seeing one in the picture to the right. Actually a good example. Inside, white people were crammed in, given basic necessities and a recreational area in the middle of the compound. Here we held activities for the children to keep them occupied in this difficult time. Just living quietly and doing things as you were told brought no trouble. I did not see one person killed or tortured during the stream. Not a concentration camp scene, but definitely a limited freedom scenario. My whole family of five had to live inside one room. That's how crammed we were. Each individual had a corner and a container to call theirs in a sense. What I felt was that some military coup happened or some political party took over thanks to the tsunami event at the coasts. They either took advantage of the panic or panicked themselves because everyone was panicking. I don't know. White people were a problem, so they were hauled off to these facilities. I saw nothing of other racial groups. In the dream I felt like something was telling me this is only for a season. The hearts of the oppressors are softer than you think, and the masses will turn against the ideals of their dictators, because this treatment does not make sense to them anymore. I did not see any war leading up to this, but something like this does not necessarily happen without initial conflict. If you hear South Africa, you think apartheid. If you live here, you hear affirmative action and statements like remember the struggle on an often basis. When apartheid was abolished, I was about seven years old and I had a Jamaican colored friend called Ross. We loved playing ninjas and watching sci-fi movies that we were not old enough to watch. Some older white family members would rant about racist things sometimes, but to me it didn't register because it didn't connect with the previous experience that I could relate to, to in any way justify acting out like that. I was told sometimes that dark African people caught you at night and ate you, so don't go playing too late. 
Just an example of social conditioning that went on those years. Social conditioning that still continues today on both sides, perhaps. But my buddy Ross was awesome, and I never could see him in that light. Though I never stayed too late because I was not going to challenge the common consensus and let myself be eaten just yet. Just kidding. I can also remember our house health that was very dear to us. Like family. Even after we moved away from that town, we still sent her things via mail or paid money into her account, for the very reason that apartheid was making things tough for her, and she was also very sick and eventually died of that disease. I can remember a black man with a huge smile coming to our house once in a while. I believe it was house visitations because he was working for the church. His smile and laugh was always so surreal to me as a little kid because he was exceptionally dark with a wide mouth and large pearly white teeth. The contrast was striking and is still burnt into my mind. I always thought he must really like us when he is black and visiting a white family so often. What I'm trying to convey is that it's hard to build racism on good normal experiences with people like these, but it is easy to build racism on a different hateful experience. As a 28-year-old white male, I've had my fill of reverse racism. I understand affirmative action as an act of balancing things out, receiving opportunities that was denied to you because of a political, social setup. But some African black or colored people are seething racists themselves. And I'm not talking just about South Africa. Using affirmative actions as tools of revenge to either push it too far or with a hostile, spiteful attitude that usually ends up on a slippery slope that will cause you to end up in way over your head with hatred issues. Don't do it. By taking revenge on me, a kid that had nothing to do with that era, leaves me with the logical response of taking revenge too. But then I'm called wrong for taking that revenge. If that's so, then that makes your initial revenge wrong too. So I will take revenge on you taking revenge that will cause you to take revenge again and so we avenge our human rights by attacking each other's human rights. What? Racism is wrong and it leads to a vicious cycle. Like I said, it seemed that the racial turmoil didn't last long because up until now humanity has learned too much to repeat the past. A figurative tsunami dream, teaching me a lesson. Picture a thin island in the middle of the deep blue ocean with a single house on it. I was in this house with my brother. Brother in this dream can be symbolic of others or as in fellow human beings. I was telling my brother about my flood dreams. We were talking about that and other things. He gave some attention but didn't seem too interested convinced or affected in any way. He was playing on his phone while I elaborated. I realized I bored him, so I stopped. I heard a rustle in the distance outside. I could have stayed in the house and hanged out with my brother some more, but in the window behind him, the blue sky seemed a bit bluer than normal, almost the color of deep water. Well, that was strange. Why was the sky dark blue in the distance? My brother didn't even notice me exiting the room as I stepped out to see the most ungodly huge wall of certain crushing and drowning on its way to our little island and house. A wave that reached to the sky was on the horizon. It was so far away, but it seemed like an approaching mountain soon to block out even the sun on that side. In the dream, I actually remembered the movie Interstellar. Exactly that. I felt vertigo as my mind processed the sight, and I had to squint just to make out the crest in the sky. My knees buckled, my stomach sank, delirium set in. The tsunami in most of my dreams was not this high, it is not mostly this high, and I don't believe it will be this high. I believe this sight was to put emphasis on an idea by God. My body moved on its own, as my only thought was to move to the back of the house so that it could at least break some force and block my view 
from seeing the blue apocalypse. As I was moving around the house, I called out to my brother with a feeble voice that sounded like a scream. His first glimpse made him run. I don't know where. I came around the corner of the house to see the rear view of the island. Nauseous paralysis is not the word to correctly describe the shock of another wave coming from the very opposite direction. My mind tried to fathom how screwed I was, but I could only look at this wave coming from the back, reasoning how that this was the last thing I ever expected and how horrible the moment would be when two walls of annihilation will smash me as the unfortunate soul caught in the middle. I woke up and immediately exclaimed things, not all of them appropriate for church. I got up feeling disoriented and bewildered and shared the dream with the very same brother that was already up while having a smoke and playing on his phone. This is the message from the dream, I believe. This very symbol occurred in some other ways as well in other dreams. In one dream, a destructive tsunami also came from behind. Same feelings came on me because of that. In another dream, animated water came from behind me to sink my feet into the ground so that I could not run to the coast to save those marveling at the receding waters that come before a tsunami wave. This is from a different dream. I'm just compiling an idea from various dreams now, including the one I just handled. I could also breathe in this water from this different dream that came from behind, that had my back and protected me. The water was animated. It seemed like 3D animated cartoony water. I felt an alive spirit in this water, living water, like a personality was in the water. The sign in the sky warning me and others that you have 15 minutes left to get to high ground was also alive from other dreams now, that sign in the sky. It was also alive, moving, convulsing and bulging. In one dream, the massive cloud sign was actually constructed by clouds flying toward it like jet-propelled blobs of living water and then building the massive omen. Funny thing, tsunami dreams either have animated water away from behind or a sign in the sky, but never all or even two of them together in one dream. Coincidence? Way from behind, living water and living cloud omen in the sky must be connected or the same thing from different angles. The physical wave coming from the sea and the animated water warning you and keeping you safe. The water that has your back. A thought. The wave coming from the front will be cancelled out by the wave coming from the back. Which wave are you facing alone? Because the one coming from the front, I won't do it, Mark. Sara. Shh. Right. Because the wave coming from the front is against everything. So the wave that has your back is your only shot to avoid the crash. Back to the dream in question. I believe the physical tsunami will cause the death of millions. I have physically and mentally prepared myself for this and those around me, to the best of my ability. This dream told me that physical preparation was not enough to survive the pressure that will crush you. The shock of this disaster and the shock of realizing the reality level of God in our universe will be so severe that the two will crush your soul if you are not spiritually prepared as well. A house in a dream represents someone's life or your personal life. An island in a dream represents a personal meeting place with God, or a place where you find seclusion and meditation, relaxation as well. To me, a place where God speaks to you loudly in quiet meditation. Look up John on the island of Patmos, where he received the apocalyptic writings of Revelation. Are you or those around you caught up with the attention of others or in the attention of gadgets? and gimmicks taking up your personal life. Look out the window, away from your goings and doings for a while, and test yourself. Is God warning you too of things to come, or is he not? Is he telling you something else? This dream of mine is rife with biblical language and supported by 50 or so dreams speaking of the same event. 
Take the time tonight. Chase the distracting brothers out of your lives. And listen. Hear. React on a biblical passage you are told to read in prayer, or wait until you are shown an image in your mind while meditating on Christ's voice. Take this image, draw it, play with the symbolism. Do you notice anything? Are you receiving anything through this picture? Test what you hear. Test it through others. Test it through the Bible and test it with more prayer. Are you enveloped or outside the living water? The only force that can cancel out the full brunt of a global catastrophe and maybe the beginning of the tribulation. Hint for the scientific, rational Christians and also atheists that might be listening to me. God is telepathic. You have telepathy built inside you. Sweet Jesus talks to me. How cute. Call it like it is. If you want to hear God, understand the phenomenon of telepathy and practice hearing Him. Watch out. He is not the only one trying to win your conversation. God did speak to people, low and high, in the Bible. He will speak to you. Do give it more than one minute of effort, or at least more than a sheepish, religious babbling. Come in your full humanity. Come as you are. Yes, I am an amateur in uploading the common quality of videos made by most mainline YouTubers. But I am doing my best at the moment with freeware because I am in a sense representing God and with practice and exposure to this world, I will only get better with time. I am really open to buy and use Adobe Premiere so that I can do more with videos, but that is extremely expensive for me now and I would not know how to make anything with it from scratch to begin with. I barely succeeded in recording and morphing my voice in the first video. As I worked on and uploaded all my major warnings, and there are others not or barely mentioned in the trailer, more and more are coming back to me. I confess that sometimes I pushed God away. I know how Jonah must have felt, but now standing in Nineveh, I can feel something very different surging through my body and heart, and the sense of purpose feels refreshing. I must also state that I'm not doing this after hours of research and then creating a sensational presentation. I don't have time, interest, or feel compelled to couple my videos with exhaustive research to produce a Watcher documentary. Watcher documentaries are the works of Christians that are driven to watch current events and relate how they fit in or relate to biblical prophecy. I love and respect the deep research in good Watcher documentaries. But life is tough for me now. Don't expect research projects and facts here. Others do that, and they do it excellently. See the channels this channel is subscribed to. I do not consider myself a watcher, and I believe my purpose is prophetic in nature. Different classes of Christians with different classes of gifts and interests. I did not choose this direction. It just came, and has kept coming to the point where I have accepted it and started enjoying it because it resonates with who I am. Here you will hear about my dreams, visions, out-of-body instances, godly experiences, demonic run-ins, and the occasional humorous punch I throw at these experiences. I do, however, understand the principles of research, like proper hermeneutics, exegesis, the original languages, and context through my accredited studies. And I will use them where I need to, but, here, you will mostly get first-hand accounts with the addition of my primary or semi-informed personal thoughts. I want to give the experiences to you raw so that I can put you in my shoes and also give you the opportunity to experience the unraveling of these mysteries as I experienced them. And you know, I'm gonna speak about stuff already past and that's coming. If my predictions pan out, well, that would be fancy. But if they don't, then I am a bad modern example and infected with a divination spirit. As simple as that. I am a man, but God is God. I also do not want to give my experiences necessarily as fact, because if you think something will happen, 
then my actions may push your life in a harmful direction that may not have been intended. My warnings are being archived here, adding to experiences of others and therefore becoming a resource of prophetic insight, just in case all of this transpires. Especially if the tsunami event happens as foretold through me, I believe I received a lot that will be useful to the victims of that disaster, or for people that will have a lot of questions afterward. When apartheid was abolished, I was about seven years old and had a Jamaican cut. When apartheid was abolished, I was about seven years old and I had a when apartheid though I never stayed too late because I was that no. Though I never stayed too late because I was not gonna challenge luck because of I always thought he must really like us because he is I always thought he must really like us when he I always thought he must really like us. I always thought that he must I always thought he must really like us because but it's easy to build but it's easy to build racism. <clears throat> But it's easy to build races. But it, but it is <clears throat> by taking revenge too. Yeah. Don't do it. But then I'm called for taking. <clears throat> this dream told me that physical preparation was not enough to survive. This dream told me that physical preparation was not enough to survive the pressure. This dream told me that physical preparation was not enough to survive the pressure that will envelop you. <coughs> this dream told me that the physical... God did speak to people, low and high, in the Bible. He will speak to you. Do you give it more than one minute of effort? Or more than a sheepish religious... Or more than a sheepish... 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 <laughs> Or more than a sheepish sheepies sheep sheep or more than a sheepish religious baby or more than a sheepish religion he will speak to you or more than a sheepish religion do give it more than one minute of gift long stop Or more than a sheepish religious or more than a sheepish sheepish. Who comes say I get so weird? Okay. <laughs> Do give talking to God more than one minute of effort. And more than a sheepish religious sing. Do give it more than one minute of effort and more than a sheepish religious sheepish religious okay. God did speak to people low and high in the Bible he will speak to you do give it more than fact the old in Daniel God did speak to people low and high in the Bible <coughs> God did <coughs> He speaks to people today. He will speak to you. <coughs> God did speak to people, low and high, in the Bible. He will speak to you. Do you give it more than one minute of effort? Or at least more than some sheepish, religious babbling? Watch a documentary is, is, is just a term that I'm calling now. I'm like... I think it's the first time something like that has been a little bit shorter. Don't expect researched, researched, re, bleh, bleh. don't expect researched projects, don't expect research projects and facts, <clears throat> don't expect, don't expect, here you will, here you will hear, here you will hear about, here you will hear, 
Here you will hear about my dreams, visions, out-of-body instances, godly experiences, demonic run-ins, and the occasional humor. Here you will hear about my dreams, visions, yes.